The American pawpaw, Asamina triloba, is a native fruit tree found growing wild in the southeastern third of the U.S. Though it is still rare in commercial production, the pawpaw has high potential to become a profitable addition to small farms across much of North America. Both their novelty and their unique tropical-like flavors make them highly attractive to consumers. Most people describe the flavor of pawpaws as a cross between banana and mango. Some people report other flavors, including pineapple, melon, citrus, coconut, and vanilla. The texture of pawpaw fruit is like a rich pudding or custard. Growers like the pawpaw's wide adaptability, low maintenance, and high resistance to disease and pest problems. Though pawpaws will grow on a wide range of sites, they will do best on deep, fertile, moist, but well-drained, neutral to slightly acidic soils. They will not tolerate droughty, alkaline, or very poorly drained soils. Consult the Web Soil Survey, a USDA soil survey book for your particular county or NRCS office personnel for assistance in selecting appropriate soils and sites for pawpaws. Pawpaw nursery stock should be acquired only from reputable nurseries specializing in trees that produce commercial quality fruit. Fruit from wild-type pawpaw trees will not be easy to market. Stock should either be container-grown or grown in special beds of light, porous growing medium, such as peat and vermiculite. Pawpaws do not survive well when grown in a field and then dug up bare root. Root systems of pawpaws are very long-lived, perhaps for centuries. In contrast, the above-ground portion of the plant, the trunk and top, is rather short-lived for a tree, averaging only about 15 years. The trunk then goes into decline and dies. Meanwhile, the root system sends up numerous shoots or suckers. If the original tree is a seedling, the suckers will grow into trees identical to the original. On the other hand, if the original tree is a grafted variety, the suckers will grow into trees identical to the rootstock, not the grafted variety. Most likely, the rootstock used for the graft will have been a wild tree, and its suckers will grow into trees that bear only small quantities of small-sized, seedy fruit of poor quality. For this reason, pawpaws are nearly unique among fruit trees in that it may make more sense for commercial growers to plant seedlings with superior genetics instead of grafted varieties. These trees have a high probability of being heavy bearers of large, high-quality fruit. The original tree will still die after about 15 years, but the suckers it sends up can each grow into a tree identical to the original. Pawpaws should be planted 10 feet apart within rows, and rows should be 15 to 20 feet apart. They can be planted in spring as soon as the frost is out of the ground, and right up until mid-September, to allow the roots to grow into the undisturbed soil beneath the planting hole. This will help prevent frost heaving, which can be lethal to pawpaws. Pawpaws should be planted with the root crown, the point where root and trunk meet, right at ground level. No part of the trunk should be buried or allowed to settle below the soil line. For container-grown trees, the planting hole should be dug the same depth and no deeper as the height of the container. For bare root planting, the hole should be dug just deep enough to accommodate the root system without crowding or bending the roots around the sides of the planting hole. Normally, only the soil that came out of the planting hole should be used to backfill. Young pawpaws are sensitive to direct sunlight and can be damaged, stunted, or even killed by it. Pawpaws planted in full sun should have a two-foot-tall tree shelter or grow tube applied immediately. The tree shelter will provide exactly the right amount of shade, and when the tree grows out the top, it can then tolerate full sunlight without harm. The tree shelter also protects the tree from being snipped off by rabbits or mowers or stepped on by clumsy feet. Though pawpaws are fairly drought-tolerant once established, 
Newly planted pawpaws should be supplied with supplemental water in the event of a dry spell. Effective weed control is critically important to the establishment of a planting of pawpaw trees. Young pawpaw trees can be easily stunted or killed by competing vegetation. Mowing by itself is not effective weed control. Neither is mulch or landscape fabric. But for those averse to using chemicals, these three used in combination can be very effective in helping to get pawpaw trees established. Lay a three-foot square of landscape fabric down around the base of each tree, leaving a slit for the middle of the tree to poke through. It is important to secure the margins of the fabric with a six-inch turf staple at each corner, another halfway between each corner, and a ninth staple to hold the slit closed. Failure to fully secure the landscape fabric will result in it getting sucked into the mower blades. If this happens, the whole tree may be ripped out of the ground and hurled through the air. Young pawpaws do not survive this mistreatment, and the cost to you will be much higher than that of a few extra staples. Cover the landscape fabric with two to three inches of coarse wood chips. Keep the vegetation mowed short, right up to the edge of the fabric. A low-cost but highly effective alternative to the fabric mulch mowing weed control strategy is the use of the herbicide oust, sulfometeron methyl. When used according to label directions by a qualified pesticide applicator, oust will control weeds for a whole year with just a single application. It can save $1,000 per acre or even more compared to using mulch landscape fabric. On a good site with effective weed control, pawpaws should become established and begin bearing fruit within four to six years after planting. Once established, pawpaws need little or no additional care beyond some light pruning to control tree height to keep the fruit within reach of the ground without a ladder. Pawpaws can be marketed in a number of ways, including to groceries and health food stores, at farmers markets, and even through internet mail order. Probably the most profitable way is through a pick-your-own operation. Pick-your-own eliminates the costs of harvesting, handling, refrigeration, packaging, and shipping. Even with a lower cost per pound price point, pick-your-own will usually pencil out better than any other marketing strategy. One potential future market for pawpaws is for their chemical extracts. A family of organic compounds called Ananaceus acetogenins are found in the leaves, the bark of the twigs, the seed coat, and in the unripe fruit. The chemicals disappear from the fruits as they ripen. These chemicals have been shown to have very powerful anti-carcinogenic and insecticidal properties. A company in Utah extracts these chemicals from the pawpaw plant for use in a herbal supplement marketed as pawpaw cell reg. Commercial pawpaw production in the U.S. appears to have a bright and profitable future. Follow these steps, and with a little hard work, pawpaws could become a highly profitable part of your small farm.